I have never seen Warframe to be hyped or extensively promoted by the ad and content creators. I have only seen certain videos on YouTube telling that Warframe is a decent looter shooter with multiplayer elements that can be played freely by everyone who got nothing else to play. In the modern age of gaming, this means two possibilities. Either the game is not good, or the publishers are not concerned promoting it better and more aggressively. Warframe is a free-to-play game developed and initially published by the Canadian company Digital Extremes, notable for its work with Unreal Tournament 3 and 4, along with an array of other projects. Now it's owned by Leiyu, a Chinese publisher, who in its turn is owned by Tencent. <laughs> I never considered Warframe to be an MMO, but other reviewers and websites seem to consider it to be something like Destiny, a looter shooter with MMO elements. The creators mostly tend to admire the gameplay mechanics behind the game, its multiplayer elements, its graphics and many other aspects while admitting that it's really grindy and it's not friendly to the newcomers. Having played for approximately 30 hours, I'd like to state that all of the promotion materials and reviews comments were lying all the time, as it's not a looter shooter, it's a skateboard simulator. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex B and this is the first time playing, a series where I try a completely new game in MMO genre, which is also completely new for me, to share my first impressions as a completely new player. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. For now, let us begin. Warframe is available almost on every contemporary gaming platform. Steam, Epic and Standalone Client on PC, PS4 and PS5, Xbox One and Series, even the Switch has its own client. So, even if you are watching this video and never tried this game, there is objectively no reason for you not to try on whatever the platform you are playing. I suspect that even if you got a modest PC, it'll run decently, as it runs on Switch, with no issues due to its great optimization, but we'll return to it later. I have registered an account, then loaded the client, clicked play and witnessed one of the most epic cutscenes among the MMOs I've played so far. It shows the basic premise behind the gameplay and introduces the main character, the Tenno, one of the representatives of the ancient warrior race who was always responsible for keeping the universe safe and peaceful. For reasons unknown, it's not like that anymore. Tenno were put to sleep, and only now, when the worlds of the universe have gone to a complete downfall, we are getting a return to our older self. Immediately after the cutscene, it transitions to the gameplay, in which the game shows the basics of the movement, using the skills and the combat. It also gives the direct connection to the story that was shown in the introductory cinematic, which is a huge plus for me. I've chosen the Vault character as I want to see how the magic skills work in the game aside from the combat abilities. And let me tell you, all of them work freaking amazing. The character moves smoothly with a lot of speed and agility, he casts the lightning like a Sith Lord while mashing the enemies with the stick and shooting with the rifle. And that's what I call the great introduction to the game that directly shows what you're going to do in this game. The tutorial consists of a couple of stages, where our Tenno wakes up from a long slumber and runs from a kidnapping attempt, recovers his railjack, a small spaceship allowing him to travel from one planet to the other, and gets rid of the leg bracelet by killing his kidnapper. It sounds like a good start, it introduces the enemy race of Grenier and their attempt to conquer the Earth and nearby planets. During the tutorial it builds a lot of concentration on the goal of the combat, the character-driven plot and once we reach the Earth, the first planet on our way, the game makes the biggest dip in almost all aspects of the gameplay aside the combat. And that can seemingly be the reason why only every fourth player has an achievement of playing 10 hours of Warframe. Of course, the Steam statistics does not represent the trend for other platforms, but only after traveling further to other planets and regions, I can really say that Earth segment needs either a review or complete rework. But we'll get to this later in the review. Let's return to the Earth, as with all its shortcomings, it has a lot of foundation that you'll need to know further. In short, the story so far tells us that we are Tenno, who can use various combat armors called Warframes with their unique abilities and properties, along with an unlimited amount of melee weapons and firearms. After completing the tutorial and becoming ready to the first adventures in the game, we get a lot of so-called mods, and even more various items including currency and crafting resources. 
The mods are used to make both the Warframe and the weapon stronger. There is a wide range of mods, depending on specific Warframes and specific weapons, specific styles of combat, specific abilities, etc. Equipment of mods is limited by the level of Warframe and the weapons along with many other characteristics that change during the gameplay process. In other words, with each new level you get more mod capacity allowing to either equip new mods or evolve the current ones to higher level. If it already sounds complex, that's ok because it's just my surface level understanding of build creation and customization of the character. Luckily, there is always an option to auto-equip the mods you already have, and so far, the auto option did not let me down. Moreover, this add option shows what specific mods do, allowing you to learn about them more. And I believe this is the option that more games need, especially the ones that specialize in complex builds and skills management. You should always get an auto option that just makes the character playable. And that's the type of game Warframe is. It requires a lot of interest from the player to provide information, because it will not provide it otherwise. It really gives an impression that you are actually a newcomer in the universe of the game, where you've been so long asleep that you don't know anything about the game, while the environment around you lives its own life. When I arrived on Earth, I landed on Cetus, a colony of people resembling conventional humanoids, and it was a really confusing experience. All I had were the questions, who is this? Where am I? What do you want from me? Why do I need to be here in the first place? Initially, all these questions were frustrating and meaningless, because I could not feel any sense of attachment to this colony and their quests. I've just wanted the colony until I got the quest from Konzu telling me to recover some sort of local relic. This eventually led me to a complete couple of other quests just to progress further, as the non-quest levels were more fun for me to play than resolving local problems of some fishermen. There was also a sense of dissonance between the side missions, telling me to grind hordes of aliens and gather loot and looking for a relic that do not benefit me in any way immediately. And even when I was told to resurrect Gara, I did not understand what the game wanted from me, as all I wanted was to leave the Earth and this boring humanoid. The game told me to complete the Venus Junction next to progress to a new planet. In order to do that, I needed to complete an array of tasks and complete a couple of levels on the course to the junction. It was simple, it was more fun and it was less frustrating, and I am more than glad that I did, because Venus Segment was a lot stronger stylistically and quest-wise. Instead of a poor fisherman village on Earth, I was met with this. The air and water flowing hard, the land we call our Fortuna was the perfect stylistic and atmospheric characteristics of the planet that actually made me interested in the game, the characters and their stories. The same can be said about the Necrolis questline on Deimos. Both these areas are completely different and original, demonstrate drastically different characters and storylines, but eventually they come up to one conclusion – grind items and perform tasks for them and get rewards in return. And only after completing the quests on Deimos it clicked in my head. Our main goal in the Warframe is to live through all the space adventures with a sandbox-ish approach, because aside from the aforementioned grind via combat and completion of the tasks, there is a lot to do in the game which you need to discover by yourself. For example, I did not know that after clearing the planet side quests at least once, you get an option to gather its resources using drones. Uranus. In order to get drones, you need to buy a blueprint on the market, which initially seems only to work on the premium currency to buy premium items. After that, you need to craft the drone, deploy it and wait for a lot of time to get resources. I didn't know that you could buy blueprints for all the warframes and weapons right in the arsenal. At first it just offers you to buy the ready-made items with premium currency, but when clicked, there is a blueprint for in-game items. Next. 
I didn't know that you can solo play everything and make the Warframe a single player experience. I was also highly surprised that with customizing the looks of the Warframe, you can also customize the Railjack to make it look and feel however you want. And this is all that you need to figure out if you want to. The game does not explain itself, but offers a lot more than it shows. It's like entering a party with a lot of chips and beer on the tables offered immediately, but when you ask the bartender for some whiskey and ice cream, they give it to you with a look, why did you ask for it sooner? And I like this feeling, the sense of discovery and surprise that is everywhere, which the game offers. But I also understand why a lot of players do not want to bother with all of this, and dismiss the game as another looter shooter with a lot of grind and a little substance. The grind aspect of the game can also be improved a lot. Mechanically, the process of fighting enemies is satisfying as hell, the guns shoot with a great puncher response and the melee weapons allow to slice through the closing contest. When combined with high mobility and agility of our Warframes, it becomes a whole unique experience that is not provided by the competition. To be honest, I cannot really name a game that creates the same sense of both horizontal and vertical mobility. But when it comes to the rewards from the grind, aside from the direct satisfaction of shooting crowds of aliens, it becomes less enjoyable, especially from the first glance. I am not that proficient in looter shooters. Only played Borderlands 1 and 2 long ago, but I've got more experience with action RPGs like Diablo and Souls likes like Nia. Both these games create the enjoyable mechanics for combat and directly indicate the loot you've collected. Diablo and Path of Exile use the color coding to show rarity of items. Neo directly shows not only the rarity, but the power level of the loot for you to make it more exciting and rewarding. In Warframe, it takes time to actually figure out what is loot. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Enemies drop health and mana orbs, currency items and resource items, various armor and modes. And while the UI does its best showing what resources are more important or less relevant, it takes time to separate what is needed and what is not. Warframe could have made at least different sound indicators upon dropping rare and important items like in Path of Exile. However, even with this, it takes time and patience to figure out how everything works, because for me, the beginning stages of the gameplay were like this. I landed on a mission, slayed dozens and sometimes hundreds of enemies, got a lot of unknown cargo and returned back to the ship. What's more confusing, I could not get any information about the location of specific resources for crafting. Crafting is the major reason for the grind, as there is a lot of items and resources which I don't know nothing about. In short, crafting works like this. You've got a crafting bench on your spaceship. In order to craft items, you need to get a blueprint that shows you the number of resources and the time needed to complete it. This time varies from 6 hours for simple items and 12 hours for certain weapons to 72 hours just to craft the Warframe. It seems that the Warframes are the longest to craft, because every Warframe blueprint requires crafting three main parts of the Warframe, which in their turn also need to be created using a lot of resources and a lot of time. Of course, the crafting time can be reduced using the premium currency, but the resources themselves cannot be bought directly via premium, and I could not find anyone selling resources on a player-driven market. So, you have to be conscious of the resources given by every planet and learn this information by yourself. Or use guides, of course. You can also mine resources from the open levels. You can also hunt the animals. You can also fish in waters of the planets. The game does not tell you any of this. But these activities are also fun, just as processes. The graphical design and almost flawless optimization of the PC version of the game make Warframe one of the best immersion experiences that I've had in the MMOs so far. The design of the planets, the NPCs, the objects, the enemies and their structures are not only great in terms of being background for intense combat encounters, but are also fun to wander around and explore. And that's where the game shines the most for me. You don't have to rush anywhere. You can complete a couple of quests, get some items, check the progress you have in your crafting recipes and return back the next day. Some may say that Warframe is a chore to play, and I understand where their reasoning comes from, as it indeed requires a lot of time to progress, and it seems that it's the type of game that actually gets more fun the more you play. And I'll definitely return to discussing Warframe in the future, because I believe I've just scratched the surface of the gameplay, as there are multiple variations of content. 
For example, there are syndicates, the railjack missions, the PvP encounters, the market operations, the open space missions and many other types of content. As for the pay to win, I can't say that with buying premium currency or certain bundles you win the game, because it's mostly PvE game, and all you're mostly buying is the time for getting an item, not the power of the item. Newcomers won't even know what to do with the purchase items. And what I like the most, there is no RNG, there is no gambling, there is no probability or chance of crafting. If you collected a blueprint, you collected resources, you've got a guarantee that you get an item. At least that's how it seems for me as it was the same for 30 hours. And even when taking into account the monetary side of things, if you treat Warframe as traditional MMO with a 10 to 15 dollars monthly sub, you'll just get a quicker and more comfy experience that will stay with you forever. It does not seem that the unlocked weapons or items lose their power with the new updates like in popular MMOs. So, if you never tried Warframe and you've got any modern gaming device, I cannot name a reason for you not to try it at least. As for me, I'm highly impressed by its positive sides and not discouraged by its grind, complexity and lack of hand-holding to keep on playing to this day. It's highly likely that I'll return with a follow-up video sometime in the future. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click a like. And if you're here for the first time, consider subscribing to the channel. Share your thoughts and impressions about Warframe down in the comments below and let me know what game should I play and review next. As for now, I thank you all for watching. My name is Alex B and I'll see you in the next one.